Hello everyone and welcome back to another A Massive Chess Game by Wilhelm Steinitz from 1867 against his opponent, an unknown chess player. So you can see that Wilhelm Steinitz is playing with the knight odds. He doesn't have his knight on b1. And let's see what happened in this chess game. This is a Massive Chess Game. And Wilhelm Steinitz starts the game with pushing the e-pawn e4. We have e5. f4, it looks like the king's gambit, accepting knight to f3, d5, e takes on d5, queen takes on d5, developing the bishop, bishop to c5, so Wilhelm Steinitz also sacrificed a pawn for the quick activity, d4, defending the bishop, but this move has a downside, also, although Wilhelm Steinitz didn't uh, saw that, he castled, he missed the best move, g5, and what would you do in this position, this time Wilhelm Steinitz didn't miss the best move, he played the best move, and that was the best move by far. Uh, can you see the next move of white? What would you do in this position? Let me give you a couple of seconds. Let me give you three seconds, actually. One, two, three. Black should have played a bishop to e7 or something like that in the first place when he had the chance, but he played bishop to b6 and that was a blunder. Steinitz pushed the c-pawn with a tempo attacking the queen. After defending the queen, pushing the pawn again, and this is trapping the bishop. Where is the bishop going? Bishop takes on c5. Bishop to a5 is not working for black because of checking the king and also attacking the bishop, so blocking with the knight, but then pinning the knight. And this is still attacking the bishop. If knight to e7, simply capturing the bishop, and white is getting back the material. So this was a, a knight odds chess game. This is why a, Steinitz is a piece down. c5. But now black is getting a lot of pawns. So this is check. King to h1. And then developing the bishop. Actually black has three extra pawns. So this is still very good for black. A, materially speaking, and then developing the bishop, h6, a time-wasting move, attacking the queen, defending, and then attacking the rook with a tempo, defending, attacking the bishop with a tempo, and bishop to d5, and here comes checking the king, another tempo move by Wilhelm Steinitz, so moving the king, and then moving the knight, it looks like all of the pieces of Wilhelm Steinitz are placed menacingly and this is looking very dangerous for black. c6 and it is white to move. What would you do in this position? So you can see that black has a terrible position. The king is not castled. Black has a development issue. His rooks are not connected. The knights are not developed. So this is not an ideal position for black. White has a winning position and can you see? The next move of white. What would you do? Wilhelm Steinitz didn't miss the best move. He has executed his moves beautifully. So, did you see queen takes on d5? This was the move of Wilhelm Steinitz. Black has a back rank issue. C takes on d5 and then checking the king and knight to e7. If queen takes on b4, then rook to c8 is going to be checkmate, and there is no defense. So checking the king, knight to e7, but this time we still have rook to c8, only defense, and Wilhelm Steinitz captured the queen, checkmate. And I hope you have seen some of the key moves in this uh, chess game, and I hope to see you next time with more instructive and beautiful chess games from the history of chess. So stay safe, take care, and bye-bye.